Hello friends, welcome again to Learn with Lakshmi. Today we're going to talk about the philosophy and ethics. It is the part of the paper Research and Publication Ethics, meant for the coursework of Swami Ramananda Tirth Marathwada University, Nandia. Before we begin to speak about research and publication ethics and philosophy and ethics, let me request you to subscribe for this channel if you are new to it. So, uh, before I begin to talk about the concept in the paper, let me give you an introduction to the contents of the course. That is content of the syllabus in this paper. As you know that, uh, the paper number three, that is research and publication ethics, it is uh, coded as RPE, that is Research and Publication Ethics. Uh, it is for two credits, and each credit carries 25 marks, thus it becomes a paper of 50 marks. And in examination, you have to write the answers to the questions in two hours. The nature of examination is examination will be conducted by the university. <laughs> so in all, there are five units in this paper. It is section A section B and section C. There are three sections and five units in section A. Unit one is philosophy of ethics. In the first unit, you're supposed to answer the questions related to philosophy of ethics in which uh, it is again specified in which introduction to philosophy is there. In Under the topic introduction to philosophy, you're supposed to study the definition of philosophy, nature and scope of philosophy, concept of philosophy, and various branches of philosophy. It is precisely given to you. There is nothing vague in it. What are you supposed to study? Definition. Definitions you can get any, in any dictionary or on the computer. Nature and scope of philosophy. Concept. What is actually the concept of philosophy and what are the different branches of philosophy? These are the things we are supposed to study in the first part of the first unit of section A. In the second part of the first unit, we are supposed to deal with the part called ethics. Again, we have to deal with the definition of ethics, moral philosophy, nature of moral judgment, and reactions. Now, this is actually about philosophy and ethics. But if you look at it carefully, ethics is actually the part of philosophy only. So in the first unit, what we are going to talk about is the philosophy itself and the branches of philosophy. Ethics is considered one of the branch of philosophy. In the second unit, it is the scientific conduct and it is most important unit. Uh, in the second unit, uh, you're supposed to study ethics with respect to science and research, intellectual honesty and research integrity. What is intellectual honesty and research integrity? Scientific misconduct. What is scientific misconduct? That is called FFP, falsification, fabrication, and plagiarism. That is FFP. Then fourth part is redundant publication, duplicate and overlapping publications, and salami slicing. And the last, that is fifth part, is, part is selective reporting and misrepresentation of the data. This is the second unit. In the third unit, uh, the title is Publication Ethics. And in it, you are supposed to study publication ethics, its definition, introduction, and importance. There are some best practices in the second unit. You're supposed to study them. Standard setting initiatives and guidelines, that is C-O-P-E-W-A-M-E, et cetera. Then conflicts of interest. That is, this is the legal side. Publication misconduct. What is publication misconduct? What is its definition? What does the concept mean? And what are the problems that lead to the unethical behavior and vice versa and its types? That is what you're supposed to study in the fourth part of the third unit. In the fifth part, violation of publication ethics, authorship and con a contribute authorship, then identification of publication misconduct, complaints and appeals, and last one, predatory publishers and journals. This is quite common these days. So it is important for us to know what are the predatory publishers and journals. This was about section A. In section A, we have 
three units in the section B, unit four is there. And in unit four, we have to talk about open access publishing, open access, access publications and initiatives, and then all other online sources to check published copyright and self-archiving policies are there. In the third part, software tool to identify predatory publications developed by SS SPPU. And in the fourth part, journal finder, journal suggestion tools, etc., are to be studied. In the fifth part, database software tools and research metrics are there. In the database, indexing database, citation database, and then there are software tools, user plagiarism software, uh, several tools are there, Urkun and other open, uh, open source software tools, etc. And the last one is research metrics, impact factor journals, H-index, G-index, I-index, and these are the things uh, which are there. You need to know at least about them. Okay, so this was the syllabus uh, of the paper. Research and Publication Ethics. It is there with me. If you don't have the syllabus, I'll send it to Muresar and he'll then uh, forward it to you. That is okay. Now, let us start with the first part, Unit 1. It's quite general, but still we are supposed to learn it. Right. Uh, the first part is Philosophy and Ethics. Philosophy and Ethics. So we have to understand what actually is philosophy and what is ethics. As I told you earlier, philosophy and ethics, it is similar to one another. In fact, philosophy is a comprehensive term that also includes ethics in it. Remember, why are we studying philosophy here? Because ethics is a branch that originates out of ethics. It's not an independent branch. Later on, it became an independent branch, but initially it arises out of philosophy. Now, what is philosophy actually? See, we are human beings, right? And we tend to inquire and reason about the world around us. We all are human beings. When we see something, we tend to inquire, oh, what it must be, how it must be, what is this? what this must be doing, what must be the cause of this, what must be the effect of this. This is how we are full of thoughts. We are full of thoughts. It reminds me of uh, Ravindranath Tagore's poem, which differentiates human beings from all other animals. The title of the poem is uh, This Dog. I'll just read out the concluding lines of the poem to you so that you understand why am I trying to say that Human beings are different from all other animals. See, Tagore says, when I see its deep devotion, the offer of its whole being, I fail to understand by its sheer instinct what truth it has discovered in man. It has means dog has discovered some truth in man. Okay, dog is not capable of thinking. Even all other animals are not capable of thinking. They are not capable of speaking. Human beings are capable of speaking, reasoning, thinking, acting, and going beyond the physical things. Right. So Tagore further says that, where I am leading you to a fact, Tagore further says that by its silent, anxious, piteous looks, it cannot communicate what it understands. It means dog. By its silent, anxious, piteous looks, it cannot communicate what it understands but it has succeeded in communicating to me, me in the sense communicating to Tagore, what is the true status of man. Dog has succeeded in telling Tagore that what is the true status of man. That means Tagore wants to say, dog is ready to sacrifice everything, even its life for the sake of human beings, because dog knows it is the only creation in the world that can lead to the perfection or the progress. Therefore, we are human beings and we have a brain. We have a mind that makes us human because we think. And as we think, we progress. So human beings inquire and reason about the world around, around us, everything around us. Now, what is philosophy then? Philosophy explores abstract problems that are beside the concerns of everyday functioning. It is the definition of philosophy given by small. Okay, 
philosophy explores the abstract problems that are besides the concerns of everyday functioning everyday functioning what we do from right from the morning to the evening what we need to live even animals do the same thing they have a similar kind of things to do every day but as human beings we do those things as well as we do some other things what are these other things that we do we think we think of certain other things while walking if we come across certain animals we think of that animal what it must be if we look at some uncommon extraordinary incident we think of something else if we see an accident if we see a dead man we think that what is there in human life right so we keep on thinking and that is the realm of philosophy there we talk about philosophy therefore it is said that philosophy explores abstract problem problems that are besides the concerns of everyday functioning that is one thing the term actually if you look at the beginning of the philosophy in the history we find that find the name socrates who is said to be the father of philosophy first of all the first person who used logic who used to question who used to say why for the things that is called socrates but this tradition actually the tradition that is taught to us actually it doesn't mean that there are no other traditions of philosophy we have great traditions of philosophy in india also but as books tell us as these books are written by europeans we generally know that the tradition begins in greece so the tradition begins with socrates first and then it is the trend of disciples in greek uh, greek philosophy actually or greek literature and culture that plato was the disciple of socrates and aristotle was the disciple of plato okay so socrates said things a lot of things and you know what happened to socrates socrates he was forced to drink the poison in public and socrates chose to drink the poison in public rather than admitting that he was wrong that was socrates okay now actual dialogue or actual writing or speaking about philosophy began with plato according to plato philosophy evolved out of curiosity and inquisitiveness this is plato's definition i mean this is something that plato says about philosophy philosophy evolved out of curiosity and inquisitiveness if we say that plato is saying that plato uh, philosophy evolved out of curiosity and inquisitiveness we must understand that the term philosophy and actually the concept of philosophy was there even before the plato that we need to understand now what is inquisitiveness inquisitiveness is the quality of inquiring about things uh, asking questions about things that is called inquisitiveness now plato's disciple and the so greatest philosopher of the world the ever greatest philosopher of the world not only greatest philosopher greatest critic of the world greatest writer of the world and everything this is aristotle <laughs> aristotle says inquisitiveness impels humans to desire to know what they initially do not know this is the quality what quality is there in humans the quality called inquisitiveness this inquisitiveness compels us of us in the sense human beings i'm talking about a common race this inquisitiveness compels us humans to desire to want to wish to know what we initially do not know we try to learn about the things say uh, for instance if i do not know about stars so i try to learn about stars and how will i do that i'll ask some people i'll ask my elders or i'll try to read some books and try to gain the knowledge even then i won't be able to understand things clearly so i'll try to observe the facts and phenomena in the uh, uh, in the nature and try to reach certain conclusions that is what human beings are we are always curious and inquisitive this curiousness and inquisitiveness is key to the human tendency and that is what we call philosophy plato's philosophy now if you look at the definition of plato about philosophy it is philosophy evolved out of curiosity and inquisitiveness it seems that plato's philosophy is descriptive why is it descriptive you must have studied the term descriptive and analytical in the paper of research methodology these are the types of research descriptive research and analytical research 
Plato's philosophy is descriptive. Why is it descriptive? Because it explains the moral and noble framework prevailing the, in the groups and societies. Why is it? Uh, why is Plato's philosophy called descriptive? Because it explains the moral and noble framework prevailing in the groups and the societies. This is the this is said by Hussein, not me. But it is said that we can generally consider Plato's philosophy is descriptive. Even Aristotle's philosophy is descriptive. But there is also the trend of analytics in Greeks. Anyways, we people, we as the human beings, we try to understand the world around us. And when we try to understand the world around us, we are being led into the world of philosophy. When we try to understand the world around us, how do we try to understand the world around us? What is this? What is the sky? Okay, what is the universe? Or uh, the simplest question that every one of us asks, or the most debated question, what is God? Does God exist? Who has created the universe? How was universe created? These are all the questions of philosophy, and we have answers to this. Of course, there are different answers, but we have, we have answers to these questions in several religious books, as well as the books of science. Now, as we are referring to science, what is the difference between philosophy and science? See, science is analytical. Of course, it is descriptive also, but science is analytical and based on facts. And the whatever science states is logical. Similar is the case of philosophy. Philosophy is not illogical. Philosophy is also logical, it is also rational, but what it tries to do is it tries to take the invention of science and apply it to the human life. That is philosophy. If you remember, uh, the great scientist Einstein once said, the modern philosophy is not capable to cope with the scientific inventions. That was its statement. The modern philosophy is not capable to cope with scientific inventions because science is advancing, highly advancing, greatly advancing. And philosophy should cope with the science. It should go hand in hand with the science. That makes human life better. Or we live, we live in the better world when philosophy and science go together with each other. That is the case. Okay. So as a human being, we strive to understand the world around us, and this leads us to philosophy. Now, when we understand the world around us, it is not only the world, the physical world, that our mathematical world. It is also the world of human mind. It is also the world of our day-to-day -day affairs. It is also the world of our thoughts. It is also the world of our emotions, our understandings, and our considerations. It's the whole world. Therefore, the realm of philosophy is quite vast. Okay. According to Adler, see, Adler has made, a, made an interesting statement. According to him, whether we wish it or not, I, I want to be a philosopher. I don't want to be a philosopher. If I ask you how many philosophers you've seen in your life or how, how many philosophers you know, probably you would start thinking that I don't know any philosopher. Oh, my God. Or you will say that I know Aristotle, I know Plato, or more or you'll say I I know Longinus, Sores, okay, or uh, I know Kierkegaard. Someone will say I know Kierkegaard. I someone say I I know Kamu, I know Kafka, I know Nietzsche. Whatever these many names, you will say. Or someone say I I know Marx, right? Or someone uh, will name some feminist critics, something, right? Okay, but to my mind. What I feel is every human being is a philosopher by birth. When a human being starts thinking, it leads that human to certain questions and uh, finding answers to those questions. That means you think about the problems. Anybody who thinks about the problems and try to generalize things is a philosopher. That is philosophy. Therefore, Adler says that says that whether we wish it or not, whether you want or not, whether we comprehend it or not, comprehend in the sense whether we understand it or not. I mean, uh, look at the sky, look at the stars, and you say, do you understand anything out of it? I think you might not be understanding anything, or I might not be understanding anything, but there are some people who understand it, right? Those people who understand it, but who says that you do not understand it, do not comprehend it? My grandmother used to tell me, 
that there is a cot and it is running. It has a lot of jewelry in it and there are thieves running behind it. So my grandmother actually interpreted the phenomenon in the sky and told me that she has tried to generalize it. Right. So she was a philosopher. Of course, that philosophy, you must say that that wasn't a philosophy, that was a fallacy, right? Or you may say that that was a superstition. See, every philosophy, not every philosophy in the sense, uh, uh, every philosophy, but I'd like to tell you that every generalized thing may not be universally true. But the tendency to generalize things is actually philosophy. And how do we generalize things? By observations, by analyzing them, or by experimenting with them. This is how we do it. Therefore, whether we wish it or not, whether we comprehend it or not, philosophy is unavoidable and unpreventable. Whether we comprehend, whether we understand it or not, whether we comprehend it or not, philosophy is unavoidable and unpreventable. It cannot be prevented. It cannot be avoided. That is what philosophy is. Now, what do philosophers do? See, philosophers do not believe in predetermined beliefs, suppositions, explanations, or postulates. That is not the realm of philosophers. Philosophers do not believe in predetermined, predetermined, uh, decided earlier, whatever is decided earlier. Someone has decided it. It is there in the mind, and we said that that is true. Philosophy does not believe in it. Philosophy do not believe in predetermined beliefs, suppositions, explanations, or postulates. Now think of that. If there is explanation, philosophy will try to explain itself again. If there are postulates, philosophy will try to test it and postulate again. So it does not believe in anything that is predetermined. Now, if we do not believe in anything predetermined, that means it leads us towards the rational logic, towards rationalism, towards logic, because we use our logic, we use uh, the rational mind of human beings to understand the problems. It also leads us to soundness and erudition. Erudition, it is a quality of having or showing great knowledge or scholarship. So this inclination towards rational logic, soundness and erudition of human beings makes it a different animal than the others. So what is philosophy then? Philosophy is an admiration for wisdom. We admire wisdom. There are we are, therefore we are philosophers. Of course, some of us may not be true philosophers, but in general, we all are philosophers. Okay. The study of ethics, uh, talking of the ethics. The study of ethics belongs primarily to the discipline of philosophy. Right? It is one of the branches of philosophy. The study of ethics belongs to primarily to the discipline of philosophy because it is one of the branches of uh, philosophy. It is called moral philosophy. It is called moral philosophy. Now, what does ethics or moral philosophy try to do? It stresses how people should continue with their lives and what is right and wrong. What does it tell us? How people should continue with their life and what is right and what is wrong. There are plenty of philosophers. I would name a lot of them. Uh, one of the greatest I can name here is uh, the great Naneshwara who has written Bhavartha Dipika, a translation of Gita with examples. I can name him. And after finishing the work, Nanyoshara felt that now there is nothing to do. And then he ended his life. That is how it is done. That means he was a philosopher. He thought of something. He did it, something, did something for the world. And then he decided to give up his life. That is how he did, did it, right? Now, it stresses what philosophy tries to do. Philosophy stresses how people should continue with their life. What should I do? I mean, I, in the sense, what should all of us do with our lives? Should we make it better? Should we, should we go for artificial things? Should we go for natural things? What should we do with our life? And while doing this, what is right and what is wrong? What is the right conduct? What is the wrong conduct? Because scientifically, nothing is right and nothing is right, wrong. 
science only deals with the facts right philosophy deals with the idea of right and wrong the difference between the term ethics and morality is not yet clear it is not very clear there are no watertight boundaries to find the difference between the term ethics and the term morality these are not clear terms see in philosophical works uh, in philosophical works the term ethics and the term morality are used interchangeably interchangeably in the sense one term can be used for another term ethics and morality okay now let us go to the roots of philosophy find the origin of the word origin is etymological just go for the et etymological origin of the word and you understand what is the meaning and what actually is the concept okay i told you the word philosophy has come to english from greek word philosophia philosophia p h i l o s o f i a the word philosophy has come to english from the greek word philosophia it is formed of two different words one is philo and the second is sophia philo sophia what is philo philo means love liking pursuit and what is sophia sophia is wisdom knowledge understanding okay philo means love or pursuit and sophia means wisdom knowledge or understanding thus philosophy is love or pursuit for knowledge what is philosophy love for knowledge pursuit for knowledge urge to know urge to understand that is what we call philosophy any intellectual quest intended to accomplish wisdom or knowledge of some sort any intellectual quest intellectual in the sense the quest in which thought process is involved any intellectual quest intended to accomplish wisdom and knowledge of some sort of any sort is known as philosophy to plato philosopher is he who has a test for every sort of knowledge try to understand he a person it can be she also he who has a taste for every sort of knowledge and who is curious to learn who has taste for every sort of knowledge and who is curious to learn and is never satisfied may be justly termed as philosopher according to plato plato may be justly rightly termed as the philosopher such person is called philosopher according to small philosophy developed from religious contempla contemplation into empirical science philosophy developed from religious contemplation into empirical science empirical science science based on analytics science based on the finding science based on the facts science based on the experiments that is called empirical science philosophy developed from religious contemplation thinking about religious things and it developed into empirical science what do philosophers do we all know that philosopher inquires about the nature of god or of the supreme philosopher inquires about the nature of god or of the supreme okay in every culture in every religion you have the we have the concept of supreme or the god the god i'm not talking about deities there is also concept of deities there is also concept of nature worship but i'm not talking about that even in greek mythology in latin mythology in the native american mythology in indian mythology in all the mythologies we have the concepts of deities deities are also termed as gods but there is a great difference between god and the god there are gods in greek mythology there are gods in indian there are gods in american there are gods in norse all the mythologies there are gods okay but we are talking about the god nature of the god getting the point philosopher inquires about the nature of the god or the supreme the god is the supreme the one who has created this world philosophy also inquires about whether there is some god or not or it also inquires about yes there is god it also says yes there is god it also says there is no god okay 
Philosophy speaks about both of the things. Philosophy talks about everything. Philosophy also talks about the origin of the universe. It also says that and on one side, it says that God might have created the world. On the other side, it says that why should there be a creator? I mean, this is a false notion that if there is a creation, there needs to be a creator. This is a limitation of human mind to understand the world. That also people may say, that is also a philosophical question. But philosophy, more of philosophy tries to reach close to the reality, more and more close to the reality. Therefore, Philosopher enquires about the nature of God or of the supreme. This supreme, you can find it in uh, Christianity. You can find it in uh, Mohammedans. You can also find it in Vedas. That is Hinduism. Where they talk of Purusha. Purusha, the creator. That is uh, the consideration. That is the supreme. Purusha is the supreme. Vishwaroop is the supreme. Virat is the supreme. Viraj is the supreme. The concept of supreme is there in all the mythologies. Philosophy also investigates subjects related to the nature of matter, time, space. See, philosophy also investigates subjects related to the nature of matter, time, space. Understand? Matter, time, space, evolution, life, mind, and their interrelation. Interrelation between matter, time, space, evolution. It also speaks about the human soul, human fate, and relation of human soul and human fate with that of the Supreme, with the God. Is there any relation between human soul and the God? Is there any relationship between human soul and the vast expanding universe? That is what philosophy talks about. It is the art. It is in the sense philosophy is the art of analyzing everything rationally and systematically. We are trying to understand philosophy. Philosophy is the art of Analyzing everything rationally and systematically. This is what we have spoken about philosophy in general. Okay. I mean, even I keep on talking about philosophy uh, throughout the day, the discussion wouldn't end because this is such a vast topic. It encompasses everything in the universe, everything existing in the universe, as well as everything that does not exist in the universe. It speaks about the matter. It speaks about uh, what is not there. It speaks about the matter as well as about the energy. It speaks about the things that are visible. It also speaks about the things that are not visible. It speaks about everything. It tries to define everything. And it tries to define everything in relation to human beings. Here are some definitions of philosophy. The Oxford Language Dictionary defines philosophy as the study of ideas and beliefs about the meaning of life. The same dictionary defines philosophy as a set of beliefs that tries to explain the meaning of life or give rules about how to behave. The Merriam-Webster dictionary defines philosophy as a set of beliefs that tries to explain the meaning of life or give rules about how to behave. The same dictionary again defines philosophy as a particular set of ideas about knowledge, truth, the nature and meaning of life, etc. That is third definition given by Merriam-Webster. It is, philosophy is a set of ideas about how to do something or how to live. These were some of the definitions of philosophy. That's all for now. I hope you have liked this video. If you have liked it, please hit the like button and do not forget to share this video with your friends. Thank you very much for watching it.